Welcome guys, this is a brand new session of our pilot writing program where you will write an entire pilot in six weeks. My name is Connor, I'm the instructor here at Script Camp. I teach features, TV, and novel writing. And I'm um, excited to start our new session and see what you guys have. Um, the brand new ideas that you're working on for this class. Um, you're incentivized a lot to have a brand new idea for the class rather than coming to it with something you've been working on for a long time. We'll talk about that pretty soon, but hopefully everybody has a bunch of new ideas. They're a total blank slate. You know, we're going to go into this trying to finish our pilot and move on to the next one, not agonizing over if we're pulling it off perfectly or wondering, how are we going to get this thing on TV or how are we going to get this produced or anything like that? We should be approaching this as going to the gym, writing pilot after pilot to build those skills and um, trying to practice finishing things and moving on. So here's some just info about how to talk. You can request to speak in a stage channel by clicking that small hand icon at the bottom panel of your screen. Um, until you do that, you will not be able to speak. Um, when I'm bringing people up, it will be to read their log lines out loud and to answer questions about them with the purpose of helping you improve those log lines. I have to ask the questions to sort of suss out certain info sometimes or to help you out a little bit more. So um, if you absolutely do not want to speak out loud, you can use the text channel by mousing over classroom and clicking that small white word bubble that says open chat. But when you're invited to speak, you'll see a green bar at the top of the screen. You can see it here. It says you've been invited to speak. You'll have to click accept before it will bring you up onto the stage. So here's a bunch of free classes coming up. We did a, a very many free classes over on WordCamp, which is our novel writing server, um, which we've been growing slowly, but is approaching uh, 300 members, I think, or 200, 300 members, something like that. ScriptCamp is our biggest one with more than 3,000 members fast approaching that 4,000 mark, but we have many other smaller servers too. We're slowly growing and adding classes and events too as time goes by. So here you can see a bunch of free upcoming classes. This um, you can see on the left, everything in gold here is for Script Camp. So we have a best protagonist for your story class that has, was gonna be last week, but has actually been moved to April 26th. So that's the upcoming Wednesday, just so you guys know. If anyone was looking for that best protagonist class that has been moved to Wednesday. so. We also have um, this class, which is on here right now. You can see story engine and log lines. That's on, oh, sorry. Actually, this is week zero. Week one is next week. That one's also free though. So week zero and week one of most boot camps are totally free. You can come to just get your bearings, learn the basics and see the overview of the entire program. We also have write a movie in eight weeks, which is the, the intro session of our feature writing class. That's gonna be April 30th. That's nine days from now, 11 to one. That's gonna be running Sundays from 11 to one for eight weeks. So you'll write a movie in two months. Um, and you can see a couple more. We have another intro session of pilot on uh, March 5th at 11 a.m. Um, we also have new fiction writing classes coming soon in May to June. None actually announced yet, um, but will be announced soon. And uh, there's that week one of the feature class, which is May 7th at 11 a.m. Again, week zero and one are both totally free and open to the public and will be on all of our social media. So if you're joining us on Twitch, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, or one of our streaming platforms, YouTube, like that, you can still comment. We can still see your um, comments, questions, and things like this, though sometimes it takes a little while for us to actually see it. It's better if you come join us on Discord, scriptcamp.net. You can uh, head over and get the link to join our interactive live classes. We have over 100 hours of these every single month. We are a screenwriting community focused on taking you from concept to, I, to first draft to more polished script with lots of these free classes, events, and workshops, and some classes for our supporting members, which would be things like the boot camps, the writer's lab, and the advanced lab. So if you want access to all those, make sure you do sign up. Feature boot camp uh, is the one that's um, starting on the 30th. And it says starts today, I think that's actually incorrect. It starts on the 30th. Um, the, these dates are a little off, but I already went over the upcoming, uh, the upcoming feature boot camp or the upcoming boot camp dates. So hopefully you guys get the idea that we are running uh, TV Friday six to eight. That's this time slot um, for the next six weeks, and then we are running features. That's going to be Sundays starting next weekend. So starting on the thirtieth. All right, here's just a little about me. Um, I'm not going to go way too into every point here, but I am a pro working. Rep Hollywood screenwriter who's been writing full-length scripts ever since high school, moved to LA in 2015, got signed for the first time in 2017 when I was 24 off my script, um, Peter and the Wolves, which got me um, signed uh, after placing in a contest in the top 10. Since then, I've written for Shutter's Creepshow, been on some lists, which you can see here, have a thriller script set up in town, 
and I teach the boot camps writer's lab and novel writing classes over on WordCamp. I still haven't had a book published, but hope to do that this year. Um, and I have been writing novels since high school too. Have written five books now at this point, but a little a little slower getting the novelist career going. I really got started with screenwriting first and have been moving more in a novel direction um, over time, but still very much doing both. And you can do both all of the above or some of the above as well. So Skill Camp is a nonprofit with these free and low cost classes to help you learn these skills and reach your life goals. But we include many other servers, as you can see on our little wonderful rainbow here. Uh, we also include things like CodeCamp, which is probably our other most active server, all about programming and coding. Um, WordCamp, again, I mentioned is for novel writing. ToonCamp, also pretty active. Discussion about animation with multiple group meetups there per week. Creator and Film Camp for home content creation like YouTube or things like that. And Film Camp for filmmakers. Design and Lingo Camp are pretty small still. We haven't had any classes on there yet. Oh, wait, I think we may have had one Design Camp class, but still getting those up and going. Um, so feel free to stop by those servers and join them so that you'll be able to see when those classes are announced. You can become a supporting member and get access to more than just the free uh, classes and events and clubs and things like this. Um, you will get access to every single thing we do, every boot camp class all the way to the end. So if you want to keep writing a script with us past week one, then you should sign up for unlimited membership, which includes every single class, every lab, every boot camp, uh, every chat channel, member exclusive chat channels, access to video library, which includes recordings of all of our previous classes. So you have hundreds and hundreds of hours of content you can just watch whenever you want. It also comes with things like script coins, uh, script coins you can spend. They're like our little server currency. You can spend on things like silly little merchandise like the it's like the Chuck E. Cheese front counter you can get your script camp mouse pad flip flops and things like that or you can also order things like a table read for 100 coins which is going to be a bunch of people from the server gather and read your script out loud and give you feedback on it it's pretty valuable that costs 100 coins and you get 100 coins uh, to start and 50 coins every month as an unlimited member so plenty of benefits plenty of reasons to join and you can see that we have free trial which lasts two weeks you can try out absolutely everything with no cost no commitment and we also have yearly subscriptions so you're saving about 40 percent if you buy yearly that would add up to about 29 dollars a month for that one so if you'd like to stick with us and you want to get really serious about writing and you want to move down this route of being a tv writer screenwriter it takes a long time it takes many years to build these skills and to do these things um and to kind of um learn everything that you need to do and kind of establish that muscle memory that you actually get good at finishing things and moving on. There's a lot to learn and there's a lot to keep up with. And there's a lot of great sort of networking you can do here as well, meeting people in your sort of peer group who are gonna potentially be your collaborators, friends, and people moving into the industry as well. So it's very valuable to join us with an unlimited subscription. You can try that out at scriptcamp.net slash membership and sign up for your free trial now. You can still, of course, stick around in this class and listen to the entire week zero and week one class next week even if you're not a member, but to proceed past that, sign up for membership. All right, so here's the schedule. So we're starting on week zero today, premise and logline, and we'll just talk about some of these very basics of writing TV shows and the kinds of things that we should be looking for for your pilot idea, your premise. And your logline is, what is a logline? It's a one sentence expression of the premise of the show that sort of answers these questions like, who is this about? What are they trying to do? What's standing in their way? What are, their, you know, what are some of the obstacles they're gonna face? Um, what is the arc and trajectory that that character is going on? And all these questions like this that are sort of helping us to get a grasp of what the show is going to be, what kind of promises it's making and what kind of appeal it's going to have and who would just be interested in watching something like that. We should get all that idea from the logline. Today, you don't have to have a logline finished. Next, by next, the end of next class, we're gonna to try to have those loglines more locked down. Um, but if you have that early version of one, just even if it's really rudimentary or it's not perfect yet, you just have the basics of the idea, I would prepare to copy and paste that into our chat when I call for loglines about halfway through the class. So in about 40 minutes, this is a two hour class. So in the second half, we will mostly be giving feedback on ideas. So even if you don't have it worked out super well, that doesn't mean that it's not going to get notes and less developed ideas get more notes. So don't be discouraged if you throw something out there that you're like, I don't know, I haven't answered very many questions yet. And then you hear a bunch of questions. That's not to say it's a bad idea or that you should not do it. Those questions are simply to help you learn what's missing and kind of help 
build a strong, solid foundation for the project so that it is not drifting off course, that you know what you're making, and that you are trying to create the most coherent and entertaining experience possible while building these skills to move down this track of being a TV writer, which takes, again, many, many years to learn everything. All right, so week one is story engine and finishing up log lines. So that's next weekend, the 28th. And that one, we want to finalize series and pilot log lines, whereas this this whole week, you'll have all this time to kind of work on them and workshop them and get more feedback on them. And also, you'll be filling out your sketchbook, which will actually start that in class today. Next week is uh, the week after next, I'm sorry, is the outlining class. The first major structure class is May 5th, Breaking the Story, where we're going to work on completing that story beats summary, which is just a list of the major events in your TV pilot. We're moving beyond that in the following week, expanding that list of story beats into scene cards, which will be a comprehensive roadmap for the entire story with a full paragraph for every single scene. So we know what happens on every page before we even write one single word, meaning you do not have to download any screenwriting software formatting software of any kind until halfway through this course, which begins, we start pages on May 19th. So we spend the first half on planning. You have essentially four weeks to figure out what happens on every page of your pilot before you have to write a single line of dialogue, before you have to get any formatting software. So take advantage of this time, take your time, gather a wide net of ideas, and you have to sort of dump a lot of sand in the sandbox in order to have things to work with. So that's why we spend the extra week up front on our sketchbooks and on just writing down ideas for characters, scenes, lines of dialogue, moments that could happen before we even need to work out exactly how those things will fit together. So this is our big brainstorming week. Uh, Carmen says, I thought this was the feature class. So no feature class ended last week, last Friday. This is now this time slot. Friday, six to eight is now TV. Features moving to Sunday, 11 to one, starting next weekend. Thank you, Joel. All right, um, so second half of the class is writing the pilot. Week four, first act. Week five, second act. Week six, third act. You'll finish that first draft by June 16th. If you are writing half an hour, once you start pages, you will be expected to write 10 pages a week, which is really not that much. That's two pages every single weekday. Or you can double up on some days and, you know, skip a day. You can manage it however you want. I'm not your, you know, (laughs) the homeroom teacher. I'm not going to give you grades on these things. I'm not going to be there cracking the whip over your head every step of the way. But every time you check in, we will ask about progress. You will tell us about progress you've made and tell us about questions you've had or problems you've encountered that you need to sort of resolve to get unstuck. And we will help you through every step. Um, So uh, if you're writing full hour, you will be writing 20 pages a week, meaning you will be doing twice as much work. Meaning if you're newer at this and you're not exactly sure if you'll have the time commitment to make to write the whole thing or you'll have any concerns about that, just getting the pages done in time for the class, you are incentivized to write a, a half hour show as opposed to a full hour show. It is half as many pages. It's that simple. It's just less writing to do. So if you're in doubt and you're not sure, choose the half hour show. All right, any questions on just the basics, the overview, and anything else we've talked about so far before we dive in? Feel free to raise a hand and ask in chat, or you can simply type your question in the text channel. If there's no questions, we will just move right along. All right, so let's keep going. So um, you can get things like coverage, consultations, and editing on the website. So standard boot camp membership does not include a comprehensive set of notes on every script you do. There's simply too many students, and I would not be able to provide all that on my own. But if you want to get those things, you can check out our website, scriptcamp.net slash coverage. Boot campers get 50 to 90% off our normal rates, up to 90% off, so you are Uh, going to save a lot by being a member before you order these things, but you can get editing, script reads, consultations, any number of things. So check that out at our website if those things interest you. If you plan to sign up for the boot camps, but you haven't yet done so, you can look in the chat now and Nacho has posted a poll for us. Thank you, Nacho. You can click on one of those numbers. Number one indicates I plan to sign up for the boot camp. Number two indicates I don't. Number three means I'm not sure. And four means I have questions. So just click the number that's relevant to you and you can get instant access to all of our member chat channels. All right, Um, so let's, um, do I want to go into discussion asking, 
what are your favorite shows and writers? Yeah, okay. Let's just let's ask this a couple of questions up top. I may not bring people up to speak out loud yet, but f- feel free to weigh in in the text. Um, tell us about yourself. What do you want to write? Have you written shows before? What are your goals? Uh, what's your experience level? Who are your favorite uh, TV writers? Um, favorite episodes of shows? Things that made you want to be a writer? Feel free to just simply introduce yourself. I can read a couple of these out. Um, and you can let us know uh, who you are and what you're trying to do. We'd love to hear from you guys. So click that small white word bubble next to classroom and you can type in our voice, or sorry, yeah, it's the text channel attached to this voice channel. Uh, Pollock has requested to speak. Is this because with a question or do you just want to introduce yourself? Go ahead. So I've invited you, so you'll need to click that green bar that says accept. Looks like this. I was just going to mention, Pollock, if you're on a tablet, you might have to turn it sideways to be able to accept the invite to speak. Thanks, Nacho. Just a weird quirk of the formatting the or the interface on different devices. All right, Saturn says, favorite show has to be Mad Men. Been writing for a few years, currently trying to work on several projects, ideally finishing a redraft of a feature and a pilot. Cool. Okay. So, yep. Uh, Great to learn how to revise and make a coherent strategy for revision. Not exactly the focus of this class, but I myself am working on revising a couple things right now as well. Um, Joel has requested to speak. Go ahead, Joel. And uh, I've been writing on and off for, uh, I think, four years-ish. Um, and it, it's a plan that I've been working on since I first started and just trying to get that finished. Because until very recently, I was trying to sort of rewrite it before I'd finished it. So I'm just trying to write the whole thing through. Um, and I would say I'm... Yeah, I'm nearly there. I think uh, I'm page that uh, it's a sixty-minute, uh, sixty-page pilot, and I think I'm thirty-five pages in. So I'm nearly there, but not quite. <laughs> Great, thanks, Joel. And and Joel teaches a couple or leads a couple groups here. Do you want to tell people what you run at uh, on Script Camp? Yeah, sure. Um, I will take free advertisement. Um, so I have a uh, disability in screenwriting which is uh, Saturday, uh, what time is that PST? 8 a.m. PST, 11 a.m. EST, 4 p.m. British time, uh, where we look at disabled characters in the media, and if you've got any disabled characters, we'll review it and um, sort of uh, give sensitivity readings and sort of give feedback. We do a couple of writers' prompts, uh, like picture prompts, basically, which um, is quite fun. And I co-host that with Willow. Um, so yeah, come along. <laughs> Thanks, Joel. And um, also coding classes sometimes not not currently running, right? But um, in the no, past, not not done. gotcha. Um, but that's over on Code Camp. Want to get back into that? Yes. Right. Yeah. At some point, there will be more coding over on Code Camp, and uh, Joel is our great main instructor over there. Thank you, Joel. Yeah. Um, anyone else? I guess feel free to just raise a hand if you'd like to introduce yourself over voice as well, or feel free to use our text. Judea has written, Hi, I'm Judea. I adore cartoons and anime. Favorite genre is fantasy. I love things like magical girls and coming-of-age stories. Currently trying to work on a few projects, but I'd like to start with shorts as practice so I can feel more secure and ready for pilots and features. Pilots are my goal. Great. Yeah, shorts are good practice. A lot of feature writers actually really struggle with shorts um, just because of the very limited space, so it teaches you how to be efficient, how to get right to the point. There's a lot of good skills you can build from that. Anyone else? Looks like Pollock has requested to speak again. I'll invite him up again. If he can click accept, then he can talk. (laughs) 
might have to try rejoining on a different device if you're having trouble finding that or making that work. Okay, I think we're going to move forward. Um, oh, we have one more from another intro from Kevin, who says, favorite shows, Mad Men, Simpsons, Game of Thrones. Been writing for about 10 months. Just just started, brand new, great. I'd want to make a short film, then try for something weekly on YouTube. Okay, cool. So yeah, maybe web series would be the sort of thing that you're thinking of, or maybe skits, skits or sketches or something like that. We have a few groups that are dedicated towards sketch writing and comedy on the server. All right. Um, thanks for introducing yourselves, folks. If anybody else wants to weigh in throughout the class, feel free to do so. Um, and uh, we will find the text for that. So um, let's go into the class. Um, the basics are right here. The, the kind of the main thing is this is going to be a pilot written in six weeks. Is it going to be good? No, not really. And we need to move beyond that idea that any individual script needs to be good in order to uh you know draw any satisfaction from it in order to not give up and you know drop your laptop in the trash and stop doing this forever we need to move beyond that idea that anything needs to be good um you are if you were just starting to work out in preparation for the olympics you would not go to the gym one time and then be like well one of those laps i was kind of slow i don't think i'm really cut out for this right of course not your first attempts at something are not going to be very strong um, and we are often writers because we like our ideas and we take them seriously and we want other people to love them as much as we do. And we're not really used to this idea of the things that we come up with or that we spend a long time on will not often result in any f tangible rewards at all. Um, and that's the case with this, but you have to sort of accept that that's part of this and that a, a, a long, a long, long time that you'll spend in your, in trying to move forward in writing is throwing yourself against the brick wall and smashing into it every time. Um, and that means writing stuff that is maybe not going to get very good notes at first. In fact, you will spend a long time on something and you will only get a slew of negative notes. Um, and you have to accept that as just being part of the process and saying this isn't perfect because I just started at this. I don't know the basics yet. And, and no matter how long you spend on something, it does not automatically mean it will be better. Spending years on something does not mean it, like spending exponentially longer time writing a script does not mean it will be exponentially better. So let's just advance past this idea that anything is going to be needs to be perfect for us to be happy with it or needs to be good for us to think that this is worth doing or that you're you're only doing this for some kind of reward or to get a show made or to make a bunch of money or to get repped or signed right away or something like that you just have to accept it takes writing many 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 pilots before you will build up the skills necessary to start writing really good ones i mean even pros struggle to write really good pilots and even produced shows usually the pilot is not a great example of that show because everything has to align for a pilot to kind of turn out really well. Um, and the thing that we have the most control over is the script. And obviously, as these things are not largely going into production, we don't have to worry about the realities of working with a director or packaging or working with talent or rewriting on set or any of these things like that. We're just approaching these as kind of writing samples and as fun exercises so that we can start building the muscles we need to move forward in this career. Um, we have another intro from Dan who says, I'm Dan, coming off a week or two of moving procedures, but now all is set up. I like writing and trying all sorts of stuff, but prefer serial writing. Have a few projects stuck in various stages of drafting. Cool. Well, maybe this will be the boost you need to uh, move out of that stuck phase and give you a brand new pilot. Pollock says, hi, I'm Pollock, introduced in, interested in sci-fi and fantasy and transformation fiction, especially transformation fiction. I've never heard of transformation fiction, but... I guess maybe that would be sci-fi or fantasy stories where someone turns from something into something else, perhaps. Um, cool. That I did not realize that was a subgenre, but I could see how that fits into sci-fi fantasy and sounds interesting. Thanks for weighing in. Um, so uh, we are accepting that this is not going to be very good, and we are deciding to not be bothered by that fact. And we're going to use this to not only practice writing, but to practice receiving feedback. This course is as much about how to... Um, become a writer as it is about how to write something good. I mean, those are both important parts of this, but becoming a writer involves getting tons of feedback all the time. A lot of it that you would prefer not to get, or maybe, I mean, we mostly do this because we're artists and we want to make something and share it and have people clap. And that's like the cycle that we expect. 
but this does this kind of removes that third step at all because it takes a lot of effort to even sort of be able to it's like I, i'm mixing so many metaphors but it's kind of like learning to play the violin where it takes like a while before it even sounds like an instrument so you have to get used to that idea that your first couple things will get lots of notes that might ask a lot of questions or make you sort of reconsider certain things or might say some parts of this i can't quite see yet or aren't quite working yet that doesn't mean give up that doesn't mean go home that doesn't mean you will never be able to do this this is all just part of learning to be the writer is learning how to accept feedback and developing this very thick skin i mean if you think it's hard now wait until you're actually in a writer's room where you where you're expected to uh roll with the punches and constantly be able to both dissect and incisively help um uh reconstruct ideas but also to have your own ideas challenged and torn to shreds right in front of you constantly um because you are working on a staff that is intended to be a collaborative writing team you're not the only writer involved um in tv for uh most of the time there's exceptions to that and we have all seen exceptions to that but in any case tv in the u.s is mostly written by staff so we need to get better at collaborating and accepting the feedback of others even if we personally disagree with it um because in that moment you just need to take what you can from it and help use it to help improve your script as much as you can and move on to the next thing to keep building the skills that we need all right so that was just a little on feedback so be prepared to hear lots of feedback in the the class um let's do something actionable let's do something actionable that's i might as well just say let's do something all right let's do something let's make our sketchbooks let's um go to google docs and make a brand new blank document right now everybody who wants to write a pilot with the class at least unless you're just listening in and have no interest in actually writing anything but i assume you're here because you want to write a pilot for a theoretical tv show that does not exist and will not probably exist but that's okay because we know that we have lots more pilot ideas than us and even though we might have you know only thought of one for the moment we know we're going to come up with more in the future so let's go ahead and make our sketchbooks for our idea right now if you don't have an idea yet and you're maybe balancing between a couple still make a document anyway and um still you should make this even if it's called untitled sketchbook or it's just called pilot sketchbook or something like that that's all fine too there's no real format to this it's a blank un untouched google document and at the top, we I guess there is sort of a format to this because there's just some questions we're going to want to fill in um, at the top of the document. So that's going to be title. If you have it, if not, call it untitled, you know, vampire hockey pilot, whatever it is. Genre. So you should know what the genre is because you're ideally trying to write something that you're very familiar with that genre and you know how that genre works inside and out. You can write it in your sleep or you know it front to back. You shouldn't be picking genres that you don't like or that you don't watch and haven't seen a bunch of. There's no sense in doing that. You will not know what's been done before. You won't know what the fans are sick of seeing. You won't know what the fans are itching to see or aching to see. You need to be writing stuff that you watch or are at the very least a big, big fan of. So title, genre, format and time slot, we'll talk more about today and, and in next week's class. Don't worry way too much about that now, but basically you're picking half hour or full hour is what you should know for now comps are the next thing down and that's going to be two other shows that yours is sort of like these we're comparing them comp stands for comparables so you are saying it's going to be like lost meets 24 right lost meets 24 might be about a um uh counter terrorist who ends up in a mysterious location that he needs to slowly unravel the mysteries on a very limited kind of time crunch you know high level of urgency and desperation there um, so there's no, there's not an exact science to comps. You might think of it as like the world of the first thing, but the style, tone, or approach of the second thing. That's not always going to work out like that. But at least one of them should be a TV show. Um, and you can come if you have ideas for more comps. You can say like possible other comps might include this. But we're going to ultimately try to narrow this down to just two things. So you know we want to say it's going to be like uh, Raising Hope meets um, Band of Brothers. God, that sounds like the worst show ever. I just picked two shows off the top of my head. What would that be? That would be about a guy trying to raise a baby that he didn't expect to get in the middle of a war zone, I guess? Um, terrible idea, but you see how we just pick two things, and obviously you don't, you don't want to throw people way off with your comps. Don't suggest that it's something it's not, and um, we're going to take a lot of cues from those comps, and that can really store, steer our expectations for what you're doing. So, for instance, if you're writing a historical action-adventure movie and you pick Pirates of the Caribbean, okay, we're going to assume probably, or a lot of readers will assume, that there's going to be magic monsters and stuff like that in that series because Pirates of the Caribbean is a fantasy adventure series. If you intended it to be a straight historical series, you should have picked something like The Last Kingdom 
or something like that because we want to you know convey what the main kind of thrust of the show is what the what the world style and approach of the show is in the comps so don't get carried away and give us you know we're not we're not trying to impress anyone with the comps and you don't get bonus points by picking something that nobody's heard of so you only lose points for doing that so you should be picking things that you assume people will know basically what you mean don't pick something way too obscure or some you know romanian telenovela from 1937 you should be picking stuff that is either on the air or was recently on the air in the last 20 30 years and is pretty well remembered you could pick a show from the 80s if people still know and remember it pretty well or something like that and most of them have been rebooted anyway so it's like you stuff from the past 30 or 40 years are pretty safe bets anything be before that is going to be really tricky to use as a comp you can pick something you can pick a movie or a video game or something like that as one of your comps if you want to um or a book but most books that you would use as a comp have already been adapted, so you can, yeah. You'll, there's a lot of leeway with comps. Don't don't worry way too much about picking the exact right ones. Um, TJ says, I'm TJ. I love cartoons, comedies. I have a thing for the weird, but I've been writing for a while. I want to improve my skills. Great. Well, you're, then you are in the right place, TJ. This is all about improving those skills, learning those techniques towards writing a better, just learning better craft to write better pilots. And also, we teach all about the actual career of getting into TV as well. Um, so, what did we go over? Title, genre, format, and time slot, comps, series, and pilot loglines. So, a TV show has two separate loglines. Again, a logline is one single sentence that expresses what is the show about. But we need to express that in two different sort of shapes, or two different, I guess we might say, contexts. In the in the sort of broader shape, we have the series logline, one sentence that expresses what we're doing in the whole show. And then in the pilot logline, that's sort of z- zeroing in on just that first episode, just the pilot, the first half hour or hour, and saying specifically what happens in that story. So that's what why we have one sentence that gives us the very broad look at the show and one that gives us the very narrow, very focused look at just this first episode. That's two separate sentences. So you need to have space for both of those on your sketchbook and be kind of working on that and filling that in. And I would always have the sketchbook open while you're in a class so you can be writing down questions that you have, filling in the blanks and the gaps and things that you aren't sure of yet. And you should just always be actively writing in that or at least looking at it staring at it wishing you knew how to fix some problem that's acceptable too as long as it is open as long as you are looking at it so sketchbook go ahead and make it right now and i will pause just to check does anyone have any questions on sketchbooks seems like no questions do we have a um, stream people chat, Nacho? I can't find it if so. Maybe if, um, Nacho, if you get a sec, if you could just tag me in the stream people channel so I can check it. Oh, never mind, I found it. Um, okay, nothing in there. But again, if you're watching on one of our other sites, you can feel free to leave your comments. We should still be able to see them. I don't always see them right away, but um, we're keeping up with everyone here. All right, so um, you've made your sketchbooks, which is great. You've filled in those first couple things, or at least the spaces for them if you don't have answers to those yet. Let's get some ground rules. So first is don't do a true story, anthology, adaptation, or anything that's going to require you to do a lot of research. It's hard enough to write a pilot in six weeks to begin with, let alone if you have to get everything right or else your father's going to be mad that you disrespected his legacy or something like that. So you should be picking newer, fresher, original ideas that are not adaptations of anything. Um, They're not fan fiction scripts. They are brand new ideas that you have come up with yourself for theoretical shows. Don't get too excited. Your show's not going to get made, of course, but like you should at least be able to come up with multiple theoretical shows. And these pilots are going to be the main thing that we'll use in our portfolio Um, to build out that portfolio and to get work as a TV writer. You're going to need a portfolio of three to five really, really, really high quality scripts. Um, So... Um, many people do multiple boot camps. I will just say, once you finish one, you might want to move on to the next one or do a feature next or something like that, but you can always jump from one boot camp to the other. As a ground rule, don't try to do multiple boot camps at once. Many have tried. We have never seen someone successfully do that in almost two years of running these classes. Don't do multiple boot camps. You won't finish one. You'll be forced to put one aside and you will have to kind of prioritize one over the other. That has happened in 100% of cases. So just fair warning. Um, what else? Probably don't do a historical, just because that's one of those things that would take a boatload of extra research. I was thinking of, wouldn't, well, wouldn't it be amazing to write, uh, I have this idea set in um, Hong Kong in the early 90s, 
Um, but then I know exactly how much work that would take and how much research reading cultural um, research and uh, just learning I would have to do to get that right. So I would definitely not pick that for a boot camp. Um, beware of things that just are tricky to make work on the page. Things like uh, stories that revolve around lots of different copies of characters can be really difficult to distinguish those characters. And we just you just don't want a majority of the notes you get to be on, wait, what, what happened? I don't get it. You don't want the energy of your readers to be focused on the basic logistics of the story problems. You want them to be focused on bigger things like pacing character dialogue and stuff like that you know tracking your character's goals from scene to scene scene work you know really strong motivations stuff like that is what we want the, to the notes to be on we don't want the notes to be on i don't get who is who or i don't get who is where or isn't that a paradox because of that and that and that so don't do time travel just trust me don't do time travel um and parallel universe is also really hard i know we all love multiverses thanks to cinema of the past couple of years but just probably don't do one of those um, shows with really complex flashback structures or multiple timelines, like things like Sharp Objects or Gone Girl, or you know the sort of Gillian Flynn genre of we have multiple sort of storylines going on at once at different points in time. Um, really tricky to make those work if you don't have a lot of experience. So careful with that. Dan says, "Don't do more than one boot." Dan has attempted, as, met, as many have attempted in the past, uh, to do multiple boot camps and had to put some things aside. We all learn the lessons uh, one way or another. Heed our, heed our warnings. Um, this is just a great time in your idea process to just pick something weird or crazy or funny um, and just build these skill fundamentals. If you're just like, I just want to do a show about a beaver, a beaver making friends with his, uh, the other beavers and woodland creatures and building up his dam. Like that would be a fine premise for a show. It doesn't have to be something you're super serious about. It doesn't have to be something you're going to follow through all the way, you know, towards completion and trying to submit it to people in Hollywood to get it made. We're trying to write something that we can finish in six weeks that we're going to be able to build these skills while we're working on. All right, um, any questions about ground rules? seems like no questions let's keep going so um i mentioned just maybe try something crazy you can try a mashup of something that you've never seen before if you're like i love heists and i love slasher stories could i do a slasher heist have the, has the, has anyone ever done that before i can't think of how what that would even possibly be but maybe that could be kind of cool maybe a slasher needs to do a heist or maybe some characters need to try to rob imagine how cool it would be if a bunch of characters had to rob freddy krueger um that would be neat or, or you know some character like that obviously we're not trying to pick fan fiction ideas but it might be it's it's a good starting point sometimes where you're like oh wouldn't it be cool if darth vader decided to quit and start a, a business as a boat guy what's a boat guy as a fisherman um, actually, I just want to call it Boat Guy. What if Darth Vader becomes a Boat Guy is going to be my next show. But you see the idea. We just start with that point of inspiration, but then from there, we have to... Thank you, Nacho. This is just like our April Fool's prank. Um, shrimp Camp. Uh, so, yeah, Darth Vader starts a shrimp business. Um, and uh, maybe that could be your inspiration. Okay, an evil dark lord starts a fishing business. Um, but I would use that as a jumping off point. Don't try to write this in someone else's world or something like that. Obviously, if you if you do, it's not no one's going to sue you, but it's just better practice to be coming up with original pilots. These are the skills that people will be looking for and the kind of portfolio that people are looking for, too, in the actual industry. So that's what we focus on. You love the idea of Darth Vader starting a fishing boat? Go ahead. It's all yours. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, so... Uh, what else? Um, so get used to sharing your work. I know it can be hard for some writers to share their work, even at these early stages. But you have to, as a potential TV writer, you're going to be sharing stuff in the room, even in the kind of just throwing ideas out stage, which is, you know, these very early um, brainstorming sessions. And you're going to have to be ready to hear your whole staff go, boo, bad idea, you suck. Um, and get you get ridiculed by the room or whatever. Obviously, we're not going to ridicule you here, but just be prepared to hear lots of feedback at early stages if you want to be a TV writer. Um, meaning that, for instance, for one, when you write a pilot, you should stop there and not write anymore because even if your show would buy, it jumps through all 900 flaming hoops it takes to actually get in front of somebody who could read it and make it a show. They're only going to decide whether they want that show based on that pilot. They're not going to read further episodes. You're going to have to go 
do lots of development on that pilot and the series, so don't try to write more than just the pilot. Um, so you also want to use your real name or anything that sounds like a real name instead of a username. If you're going to continue past this class, you don't have to do this right now, but if you're going to come by for next week or the week after that, then change your username from a screen name to something that is a name. We can't use screen names in the industry, and we're practicing working in the industry, being in the industry. It's like an easy, it's like the tutorial for being working in the industry. Obviously the stakes are way lower. Um, but uh, yeah, if you are having trouble with that, me or Nacho, our co-founder can help you change your username, but um, just keep that in mind for the coming weeks. All right, um, we have a question about anybody bringing a rewrite project to the bootcamp. I'm not actually gonna take questions on this now. I recommend against doing a rewrite if um, you're newer at this. You will learn more from writing something new than you will by attempting to really, really fastidiously rewrite and reorganize something that's fundamentally broken. For the most part, you should still learn to rewrite, but unless you have these foundational baseline skills, it can be really difficult to even, no matter how many times you rewrite it, you're still gonna run into similar problems. Um, so uh, keep that in mind. Probably write an original, if you're on the fence, write an original script. We're not gonna stop you if you're coming with a rewrite, but you will learn more almost every time by writing something new. TV writing basics. So in the US, shows are written by staffs, which consists of staff writers that are overseen by a hierarchy of writing producers, because producers are writers on TV, just keep that in mind. And all of them are overseen by the showrunner, who's the person in charge of both production and writing. They're the big boss of the entire thing. They are the brain of the show. The number of staff writers can be anywhere from just one or two on some really unusual cases, um, or limited series or things like that, all the way up to 15 or more on things like big late night comedies, sketch shows, late night shows, things like that. Comedy writers rooms are usually bigger than drama rooms because their season orders are usually 22 episodes in the US at least, whereas drama season orders are much shorter. Um, spec means a couple different things. Let's just define this really quickly. So spec, S-P-E-C stands for speculative. It means several different separate things. In features, a spec is a script that you've written on your own that was not commissioned by anyone um, and that is not an adaptation of anything. It can be a public domain adaptation or something like that, but it was not like I'm adapting someone's book um, because they've hired me to. A spec is something you've written as a speculative piece of work on its own. In TV, a spec episode is like a fan fiction episode of an existing show. That's not what we're writing in this course. You can write that on your own to enter some fellowships and contests, but there's usually not as much point in writing those nowadays. A spec pilot is what we're working on in this class. Usually just called a pilot or an original pilot, but pilot is people know what you mean when you say pilot. That is the original first episode of a theoretical series that does not exist and probably never will exist. And you're gonna use this as a writing sample to get reads and meetings and enter contests. But if it's in your first like 10 scripts you've written, you're gonna mostly just get feedback on it. Use that to help improve your next script and use that feedback on that one to help improve your next script, etc. All right, we got a question in the chat from Pollock. Do you have any say on your script at all? Are you asking when you have sold a pilot, do you have any say? Yeah, so you usually will be attached as a co-showrunner. You will be paired up with a more experienced showrunner if it's your very first show. Um, I have not ever run a show before, but this is how it works, as I understand it. And when you when that happens, then you have to extensively develop and rewrite with their help and with the guidance of the studio. So yeah, you have a lot of say. Um, you have as much say as you can kind of manage, but like if you the more you push for, the more you fight with them, the more you argue with them, the more you seem like you're gonna be a problem, and the more you don't just roll with the punches and try to execute what they say, and you know, kind of play the part and do your job, you're gonna maybe increase your chances of getting fired off your own show, which is very common and very likely. So I wouldn't rock the boat if it was your first show. I think I would try to allow your first couple, maybe perhaps shows to um, be more like what the network wants and what your co-showrunner wants, and then eventually you'll be able to do more original stuff on your own when you've earned more of that trust. But um, yeah, you do have a say on your script, of course, um, but you can also stop having a say if they decide to fire you, and that happens all the time. So be careful. Any other questions so far? Joel says it's different in the UK from my understanding. Yeah, so in the UK, almost always the person who sells the pilot will then be contracted to write the whole series. Um, most of the time though, it will be much shorter 
and much lower budget, and you will not be guaranteed anything like future seasons. Like, the idea of shows getting renewed is a little bit more unusual there. They're called series, not shows. Um, but, like, the idea of getting another series is a, hu- a much bigger deal over there, whereas here shows are sort of thought... It's The expectation is that you will... Trying to be getting this... Re- like, if this does well, it will get renewed. After a certain sort of threshold of does it, how, does it do that well, um, then it, it would in theory get renewed um and shows are intended to make money for many many years and to run for a long time whereas in the uk they're commissioned for like really short series for the most part also um there you will just get paid significantly less for writing um screenwriting in the uk for the most part until unless until you're like you know a a a giant in the industry or whatever the money is here but it's much more corporate here we have much less control here and um there's much bigger staffs here Any other questions? Hopefully everyone's been kind of fiddling with their couple sentences of just the things that express what your show is, whether it's a fully formed blog line or whether it's just kind of a looser couple sentences or something like that, that's all okay. The goal is to have polished log lines by the end of next class, so you'll have this whole week to work on them. But in about 10 to 15 minutes, we're gonna share these early versions of our ideas for feedback. So be prepared to do that and be mentally preparing to hear the feedback and to say, yes, thank you. I'll see how I can incorporate that or work on that or any of these things. Even if you think the notes don't make sense or are dumb, you can answer the questions as best you can and use the notes you get as a tool to help you improve. It's not an order from the boss telling you what to do. All right, here's how to be a TV writer. I'll just be pretty quick with this. One is you have to get... uh, into a room, meaning you have to start as a writer's uh, P. Well, you'll start as maybe an office PA, eventually be promoted after several years of that, to, or really good networking, maybe less than a year of that, to writer's PA. After a couple years of that, and really good networking at that, move up to writer's assistant, and from there maybe move up to showrunner's assistant. All of that takes many years of being a very, very good worker bee and being a really good drone who is learning and absorbing everything they can. And this is the much safer sort of way into TV writing if you're a good assistant. I'm a terrible assistant, as I've learned a couple times, so don't hire me for that. But this is considered, um, you know, a safer track because if you become an invaluable assistant, yeah, your show can still get canceled, but you're you're in the room every day with those writers and you're building those relationships that you'll need to move to that next level and to have them kind of mentor you into being able to eventually take a staff job. The other track is to just get obscenely good at writing pilots as well as other things like plays, stand-up, features, books, web shows, other stuff like that to get attention and to get eyes on you. You're going to want to then get a manager, meaning you're going to have to have really good work that you've gotten great accolades on. So you've entered in contests and fellowships and labs and you've won or placed really highly. That will help you get a manager or help draw attention to you. Or you can have movies do really well in film festivals or things like that or web series get millions of hits all these things would help you get a manager at that point you would have your manager submit your portfolio of pilots during staffing season you then have to get those meetings impress those showrunners and then nail the staffing meetings afterwards if you do really well at that then there's a chance that you can be hired as a staff writer and move up the ranks from there what is the role of pa pa stands for production assistant so an office pa is going to do things like Um, clean the counters, buy the groceries, um, keep things organized and clean. Uh, You're going to go on errands and pick up a lot of lunches. They love to send people PAs out to get lunches. Um, You're going to be making copies, stapling stuff, um, and just doing office tasks like that in the, in, as a TV office assistant. Um, From there, you're going to move to, eventually move to writer's assistant, which is one of the most coveted, difficult to get jobs in Hollywood but this is a much more advanced assistant whose job is to write down everything that the writers say in the room to help help them organize their thoughts into coherent like episodes basically do whatever the showrunner says and and you're like a junior writer being trained by everyone and trying to keep everyone on the same page so that's what the sort of two major types of pas are doing set pas are you know wrapping up cables driving stuff around in cars moving talent from place to place um like uh holding things carrying things stuff like that so yeah a couple there's a couple different types of pas but the type of pa you want to be is writers writers pa then moving to writers assistant but both of those are quite difficult to get um okay so uh i think you get the guys get the idea this is a long long road you're not gonna 
do this with your first script. You're not going to get a show with your first script. You're not going to probably come up with a very good script on your first attempt, as we have known and acknowledged. I should get everyone to sign a big treaty that's, or what is it, a big declaration that says, my script will not be very good, and I'm fine with that. Um, so getting staffed requires more than just being a really good writer. It requires being very social. This is the most social form of screenwriting, and you need to be very quick on your feet, clever, good social skills, extroverted, good at receiving feedback gracefully and giving it well, too, able to very quickly and incisively assess what those problems are and other people's ideas and help them fix them. Just be nice. Don't be a jerk. Don't get pushy. Don't be irritable. Wear deodorant. Uh, you know, like all these basic things that people want to be in a room with you for 12 hours a day for months at a time um, are very important. Um, you need to be nice and presentable and respectful. All these things will help you out and have that thick skin and just be able to take that feedback well and roll with it and um, be pleasant to work with. Super, super important. This is all called being good in a room. It's less difficult than you think, by the way. Uh, just, you know, wear, wear your pants to the office and you'll be ahead of some <laughs> a lot of writers. The expectations are very low for writer social skills, I will just say. So if you have any at, any at all, then you will have an advantage. <laughs> um, let's skip this slide for now. Um, I think I've gone over this a million times. A master bricklayer does not need to worry about whether any brick is perfect. So this is, again, just saying your script's not going to be perfect. It's a brick in the road. And don't worry whether too, too much about whether any individual one of them is great. Okay, so let's go into log lines. And in about 10 minutes, we'll be sharing log lines or early versions of them for feedback. So be preparing to do that, writing them out in your sketchbook and getting ready to copy and paste them into the chat. Um, and uh, I will let you know when to do that. Don't, don't post them just yet. Um, so idea to log line in six weeks. We start with logline, which is that one sentence expression of the plot and kind of telling us in the series level and also on the pilot level what is happening in the show. Wh who would like this? Who would want to make this? Who would star in this? Who's the lead? What are they attempting to accomplish? What's standing in the way? Are some of these basic questions we need to know. From there, we move to sketchbook, or we really are working on the logline in the sketchbook. The sketchbook is just a great place to work out early versions of any of these things. So sketchbook is an unsorted list like it's not really a list it's more like a collage of all of your ideas and inspirations and ideas for lines of dialogue and characters and scenes and moments and and act structure and endings and just ideas you have for absolutely anything should all just go into the sketchbook with no real required format for it um, we move from sketchbook to story beats so you can start working on your story beats in your sketchbook but this is just basically the major events of the plot in the right order that they should happen in when we're hopefully having a pretty good understanding of how one thing leads to the next thing but it doesn't have to be super fleshed out yet and you can have some stuff on the story beats that's like i don't know big chase sequence through a water park and you don't know what's on either side of it or how the characters get there or why they're doing it um you just want to have it on the board and and have those major things established you're going to fill in everything you know everything that you know you're going to be working towards connecting the dots um toward towards building to those plot events even if you don't have everything perfect yet. Scene cards are the next step after that, and that's where we expand on that story beats outline and flesh out every moment so we know what every scene is. Um, and we are going to estimate page counts for every scene too, meaning that we're going to have that sense of what our pacing is going to look like. And we're going to have a really comprehensive roadmap for the entire story before we start. And again, you have three weeks once after week one to get all your outlining done. We move right from sketchbook to story beats, story beats to scene cards. If you do all that, you'll have a really strong foundation for your uh, show, and you will make the heavy lifting of actually writing the pages so much easier. We go to pages. That's what that says there, and that's not a typo. That's what we actually say. It's an industry term, meaning we actually move from pre-writing to writing the script itself with our screenwriting software of choice, like perhaps Arc Studio Pro, which is a good one you should check out. We have a link for that, and you can get a free trial of Arc Studio Pro. You can also try out something like Writer Duet, which comes with three free scripts on there, just basic free version. So you don't have to download this now, or you don't have to download any screenwriting software until halfway through the class. I wouldn't even bother with it until halfway through if you haven't done it yet, but um, you will, at that point, actually start formatting. You will go to pages, meaning you start writing the script. All right, shall we talk log lines? Shall we talk like there's anyone else talking? It's just me talking. Should I talk about log lines? Yes, I should. So. We mentioned it's that one sentence, the entire central conflict of the show distilled down into a sentence. So who is the show about? What are they attempting to do? 
What is standing in the way are some of those basic questions we're going to have. We want to imply visual action and we want to get the sense the show's about people doing stuff, not people sitting around thinking about stuff or discussing stuff. Discussing being probably the least dramatic word possible. We want to know what is the inciting incident, also sometimes called the catalyst, which is the event that kicks off your story. What do the characters want? What's in their way? What happens if they fail? Let's look at difference between pilot and series logline. So series logline focuses on unique characters, situations, and story worlds that promise many episodes. A story engine is a kind of amorphous thing. It's not one thing. It's kind of all the elements working together that make this feel like it is a show that could run for years and years. And typically, again, in the US type of system, shows are intended to run for years. So we should feel like we have a sense of what the scope and scale of this is going to be. Is this going to be a show that could potentially run forever, like your Simpsons or your Family Guy? Or is this going to be something that we have a really condensed series of events that we just need to get through? Something more like, um, what's it called? Euphoria or, um, you know, uh, are you Breaking Bad or you're Lost or you're um, any of these shows like this where there is a larger story to be told and we're just moving through it one chapter at a time. Again, if you're writing that type of show, you cannot count on getting any more episodes. So your pilot should be satisfying as you can make it on its own. A pilot logline is similar to a feature logline. It starts with the inciting incident. When X occurs, the protagonist, an adjective protagonist, must conflict or else stakes. What do they want? What's in the way? So I'm going to leave this up and uh, take questions on loglines. And then we will post and share loglines for feedback. So let me just check any questions first or clarification on any of these things before we post and share loglines for feedback. Okay, seems like no questions. Let me double check with the stream people. The stream people. Okay, nope, no questions from them. Okay, so I will give you guys like four or five minutes. Let's post what you have um, in the chat. You can copy paste from your sketchbook into the chat. Um, and uh, you can prepare to answer questions about this when, when I come back in a few minutes and start calling on people. Thank you, Saturn, for posting our first one. That looks really good, what you've put done there. So you've included genre, format, and comps. Um, please try to follow this format. I'll use Saturn's example here. It re looks really good in the, in the chat. So please make sure to answer all those questions as you post yours. All right, thanks, folks. We're looking forward to checking back in in just a couple minutes.
All right, let's start to take a look at these, and in our remaining time in class, I'll get to as many of them as we can. You're not guaranteed. You're not absolutely guaranteed um, to get the feedback if there's a bunch in the queue, so um, keep that in mind. But I will try to get to them as many as we can, and then if we have time left, I might do uh, a couple more slides. We haven't, for instance, really talked about time slot and format. Um, I put up this slide for it just because we had a question about it in the chat. Um, but basically all you really need to know for right now is half hour or full hour. We can talk more about this in our next class. Um, this is mostly just telling us how long your show will be. And also, like we have talked about this sort of status quo versus premise pilot thing. Um, this just is, does your show have, is it like a long movie with a, a continuity that really needs to you know, unfold chapter by chapter? Or is this the sort of thing where we can drop in at any point? The shows with longer continuity are called premise pilots. And I don't know if this is the official name, but it's what we call them. Shows that reset every week and you can drop in at any point. We, I call them status quo shows. You know, your Seinfelds, your law and orders of the world, things like this um, are going to return to the status quo the way things were in every episode. But don't worry way too much about that now. Okay, so shall we look at some log lines? I think we shall. I'm going to open up a Google Drive document so I can make comments on these. And so everyone can see them. Let's start at the top and we're going to get to as many of them as we can. We're going to start with Saturn. So in, with each of these, I'm going to post it. I'm going to have you read the info out and then ask questions and give you feedback. Caller, you're on the air. There you are. We should do relationship advice, shouldn't we? It's like one of those. We do have a soundboard now, so it feels a little like a sleazy radio show. <laughs> um, anyway, um, you want to read out what you've got here for us with American Ideals? Uh, yeah, I've got to be, yeah, it's like 3 a.m. where I have, so I've got to be quiet. But, um, right, so American Ideals, uh, just log lines? Um, just read out what you've got, everything you have here. Yeah, okay. So it's the genre, it's a noir period drama. It's um, an hour-long pilot, and the comps are like Mad Men, Twilight Zone, Chinatown, and Black Hate Klansman. And the series log line is, in 1950s America, a suburban sheriff lives the American dream with a seemingly ideal family, until his family's facade of perfection, because the show cracks and racial tensions in the town force him to confront his biracial identity. And the pilot log line is, after a hostage situation goes wrong, Ivan tries to track down an unknown group of killers, whilst his wife starts to get suspicious of his secrecy, trying to amend their marriage. All right, trying to mend their marriage, not amend. Amend means uh, like to yeah. alter. Um, yeah, fair enough. Okay, so you don't sound American. Hang on a second. Um, all right, so <laughs> let's let's look at this. In so that's the thing. In 1950s America sounds strange to an American reader, and we would never be this broad with it. We would say the state. So I would pick a state because America is 50 very separate, different, distinct states, um, which all would have their own problems issues racial dynamics you see what i mean so definitely yeah so because i mean it's set in a fictional town but it's like meant to be taking like on like several inspirations so like for example it's like kind of taking on the inspiration of like levittown in pennsylvania kind of thing okay so northeast is the region yeah kind of yeah kind of like northeast kind of thing yeah okay understood i would just just pick even if it's a fictional town still tell us the state because in Especially in a 50s period drama, the dynamics are going to be totally different yeah. on where you are. <laughs> yes. That's fair, yeah. Okay. A suburban sheriff lives the American dream with a seemingly ideal family, okay? Until his family's facade of perfection begins to show cracks, and racial tensions in the town force him to confront his biracial identity. Okay, I'm not sure I see it, but let me ask some questions and maybe clarify a little bit. And let, maybe, let me read the pilot log line and see if that clears things up for me. After a hostage situation goes wrong, Ivan tries to track down an unknown group of killers while his wife starts to get suspicious of his secrecy. What secrecy? Trying to mend their marriage. So the series and pilot log lines to me sound like two separate shows. Um, because it doesn't really sound like 
a suburban sheriff living the American dream. Is the American dream to hunt down killers in a small town? Like, it, it, are you saying that he's always tackling things like hostage situations and that's just part of his normal day to day life? Um, so, like, American dream, I mean more like the nuclear family kind of sort of uh, family almost. Like, so he has that sort of like perfect, like, you know what you see like in the, in the postcards and like in the billboards you would see with your uh, family at like outside your makeshift like the oh god the pre-cut houses and stuff and uh, with your two kids like that kind of thing like so he's living he has that perfect sort of thing where he has that image but yet he doesn't quite feel it himself and he's um, you know he's now the sheriff of this town where he has a lot of respect and he's still trying to um like confront his own internal like identity crisis i guess but the fact that so the the stakes seem mismatched to me or maybe you're de-emphasizing something that needs to be emphasized more i this uh, is this mostly about a sheriff and his family it's like a drama about his family or is this about him confronting external villains and trying to main maintain some kind of facade or secrecy or like i guess it just do you see how it seems like sort of several different yeah. shows? it doesn't feel like all the same show right now like, because, let me throw something at you. How about a little show called Breaking Bad? Blah, blah, blah. Best show ever. Everybody knows this show. But it, we can see how yep. the go the teacher trying to keep his home life together is complicated by his criminality, right? And we can see yep. how, how that's all part of the same thing. By, by, by keeping your crime life a secret, it allows you to maintain your family. Um, and the closer your family gets to finding out, the closer you get to getting busted. What I'm missing from this is how everything kind of ties together or connects. Especially, are you saying this group of killers is... If, if this is a premise show, is this group of killers going to be a big plot device throughout the whole thing? If so, why are they only in the pilot logline? And you were just kind of vague in the series when you say things like, his family's facade of perfection begins to show cracks. What does that mean exactly? So the family kind of play like they... I mean, the, the idea is they play both the subplot and, like, sometimes the main plot. But, yeah, so the for the pilot, they are based the subplot of the story. But, yeah, so, like, it's more of an examination of the family because the, the uh, thing about them is that they all have their own, like, problems, like, internal problems. like it, And they all have this sharing, like, theme of, like, identity. So, like, for example, the mothers have, like, a midlife crisis and she wants to break free from, like, the you know, almost step for wife kind of like sort of life where she is in this cycle of doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And you have, you know, the daughter who is like hiding her, um, she's, you know, she's actually, um, she's like, um, secretly like, um, gay. And like, she's, you know, like, um, she like wants to try and, um, ex explore like her own sexuality. And then you have like the son who's like the secret sort of like silent voice kind of thing. But like, he's slowly like being corrupted by the world around him and like the, like all the um violence of almost like it like um the destruction around it it's like it's kind of like yeah it's like a lot of things like happening with family but the main focus is like the sheriff himself okay so in that case are you saying that is this group of killers is that a plot element that is going to be relevant in the whole show yeah it will so like it will. it's um yeah, it will you, it will carry out through, like the entire entirety of like um the sheriff's sort of like um goal which is to like try and essentially get rid of them How, however uh, the biracial conflict like comes with the uh decision between either assimilating with like the community around him you know this this like white community and as such or to whether uh embrace his own sort of identity himself which would mean quitting his job as a sheriff no it's into like um like be, be more open about his um, heritage and like his own identity because like he hides it from everyone including his own wife his own like family so like he doesn't tell anybody about it except mm -hmm. we know it as an audience but that sounds like the subplot to me if the if there's a, well first of all what is a yeah. group of killers uh, so the group of killers so like um, long story short like for the um, they're meant to be like neo-nazis pretty much and like they're like Not in the town neo. that's just regular nazis yeah, yeah that is, that's, <laughs> that's, that's old fashioned nazis okay so yeah secret nazis or do you mean like clansmen yeah. um yeah kind of like like early sort of like white supremacist kind of thing like emerging from like post like uh, world war Two kind of thing okay so like and, Americanized Nazi yeah. ideology sort of stuff there there was I mean there was a Nazi, yeah. American Nazi party during World War II we had they marched in Madison Square Garden it's a real there were, yeah. there were American Nazis definitely um, and, yeah. and what are they doing they're doing hate crimes 
Yeah, so they're like that they're committing like acts of like you know, similar to like the KKK, however is is that's like more of like a red herring to like sort of throw you off of who it could be, almost. Okay. So I think you're gonna is it and it's like a is it a mystery who they are in the community and we're trying to root them out and figure out who these terrible people are and stop them as they threaten to expose your main character's identity or something like that? Yeah, and so the the main conflict is that, is that the sheriff has to like almost assimilate with them, and he has to go along with it. So he has to like pretend like he's one of them in order to like get close and like find out who like is like in control of everything. Oh, okay, that sounds interesting. I did not really didn't really seem to factor into the series logline, whereas it sounds like that's the focus of your story. So that would need to come up way more. And I can see the comparison to Black Landsman now or something like that. I I see what you're going for, and it's an interesting idea. But it sounds like you need to work that into your series logline. And your, yeah. your series logline might be something like, when his peaceful home life is shattered by the arrival of a of a hate group that threatens to expose his secret biracial identity, something like that, right? A, yeah. a sheriff needs to, def- he's like trying to protect his life that he's built and hold everything together as this group is threatening to sort of tear it apart. These are the, the recurring villains of the whole show, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that they they come up and it's like it becomes more re- relevant to him and it threatens his own, um, yeah, like his own reputation himself. And he's trying to like he just wants to fit in pretty much as, as I said. Like he wants to assim- assimilate with the community and he just wants mm-hmm. to keep that sort of facade. I see. Okay, so I would pull back on all the family drama elements because this feels like it's overpowering. Like yeah. Like that would be something we could understand to be in the background of the show, or maybe it, it maybe it does take more focus in some episodes. And there's a show on Amazon called Them. Have you seen this? Uh oh, crap! It rings a bell. Yeah. Yeah, check check that out because that sort of similar setting and plot elements and stuff like that. It might just give you some ideas. Um, yeah. But in any case, um, now that I've asked, and now that I've rigorously interrogated you on, it, I think I do understand um, what yeah. you're going for, and I would just try to find that sense of focus for this logline. We understand this is the baseline of the world. A, a sheriff who, you know, I think you, you well established, he's living his sort of American dream until the arrival of these killers that threaten to expose him or threaten to blank. He needs to stop them to get his life back to normal. If you say something like a hostage situation and a group of killers in the very first sentence of the pilot logline, that sounds like that's his normal life. Yeah. But you're saying, in fact, yeah. that is what shatters his, or threatens or jeopardizes his normal life. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So, so then everything, the conflict of the show is a result of that as your key inciting incident, the arrival of these bad guys. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So does that help you kind of like reframe and, and reshape the log lines a little bit? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, no, definitely. Great, great. Questions? Uh, No, I think that's about it. Yeah. I think she yeah, just needs to re- rework the log line. I think, yeah, thank you. Perfect. Yeah, no, it's it's a good idea. Now that I've kind of sussed out, I think I understand it um, a lot better. And it does it does sound interesting, and it's a cool world, it's a cool conflict, and it sounds like an interesting show. Just try to frame it properly so we we can sort of see what the show is and understand. Main character was for a premise show. It should be like their life was like this mm-hmm. until one day blank, and now they must blank. Try to put it in that order. Yeah, of cool. course. So, okay, that's fine. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Sure. Thanks for submitting. All right, um, let's move on to our next one. Kevin G. Come on up, Kevin. Give him a big round of applause, folks. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. we, we can't hear if they're applauding because they're not on stage. <laughs> Do you want to read out what you've got for us? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so the title I have is Manifest Destiny Genre Historical Drama. Sorry, I know you said not to, but That's okay. uh, format... <laughs> one hour TV slots um, comp- comps are like Game of Thrones and There Will Be Blood. Uh, the series logline I have is during the mid 19th century, rivaling tribes, a young United States government, and gold rush pioneers fight for the mineral rich American Great Plain. Um, for the pilot, I have uh, a Lakota girl helps a neighboring crow child steal medicine from the tribe to cure a disease spreading through the enemy. All right, thank you for this. So yeah, I do encourage you not to do historical, but that's for your benefit. That's not for my benefit. It's just to be like, it takes more work and research, but I think you mentioned this one before. So I think you've been working on this for a while. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I've been reading a few books. Okay, great. So, I mean, if you've done some research, if you feel like in six weeks you can pull off the research and the writing, 
that you need to do, then maybe maybe go for it. Maybe you can pull it off. And this does sound like an interesting overall idea. The series logline is fantastic. Uh, there may not be much to change there. Mid-19th century, rivaling tribes, a young United States government. You mean rivaling indigenous tribes, right? Oh, yeah. Rivaling indigenous. A young United States government, great, and gold rush pioneers fight for the mineral-rich American Great Plains. Fantastic efficient sentence that puts us right in the world we know the location the time period and all the different factors parties involved this is going to be a big ensemble historical drama i'm gathering from that a little bit and bark skins would be another good uh, show if you haven't checked that one out definitely watch bark skins it's really cool um i think it's yeah, on you, hulu yeah you definitely recommended it to me before and uh, i'll definitely watch it i think it's only like eight episodes too yeah i think it's a mini series it's based on a book um or book series uh in like really early colonial America, but lots of different factions, lots of characters on different sides with different perspectives, speaking different languages with different agendas and stuff like that. Check it out. Um, okay, so I have no notes for the series logline except for you're probably going to want to say rivaling indigenous tribes, but re regardless of that. Um, comps look good. Game of Thrones, there will be blood. I would maybe probably pick Bark Skins instead of Game of Thrones just because we don't want to make people think there's going to be fantasy elements in it, but I get what you mean. A lot of people do comp Game of Thrones if it's going to be a big historical-ish ensemble or something like that, but I would probably just pick something historical. True, um, true. Pilot Logline. A Lakota girl helps a neighboring crow child steal medicine from the tribe. Which tribe? That's two separate tribes. Uh, oh, yeah, Lakota tribe. So from her from own her tribe. tribe. From her own tribe. To cure a disease spreading through the enemy. Well, the enemy, a disease doesn't spread through the enemy. It spreads through enemy territory, I think you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I definitely, yeah, I, I wasn't sure how to structure the enemy part of it. And the enemy would be referring to the crow, but I didn't want to use crow twice. Yes. And are those the only two indigenous tribes in the area? Or are you saying that's just the major ones? Uh, those are two of them. There's a few other ones, like uh, Pawnee's one of them. Um, I have a list written down, but at least for the pilot, I just want to focus on these two. That's a, that's um, the right idea. That's a good idea. Um, why is she trying to prevent disease from ravaging the enemy side? Yeah, so in my head, I was thinking, like, um, this girl is very compassionate, and she, you know, just sees that they're struggling and wants to help them regardless, you know? Despite the fact that she's now being a traitor to her own tribe, she's willing to go that far. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> I understand. Um, but what's? Let me ask this: What's the conflict? Is it that? So, is stealing the medicine the whole pilot, and at the very end we get it, or is it like we steal the medicine in the first act, and that's like the inciting incident, and then the rest is trying not to get found out by my own side, or something like that? Help me understand what we're doing in the majority of the pilot. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So <clears throat> what I've written down that I was thinking of, um, well, basically the girl um, has, okay, the tribe hates the crows and yeah. one of her and her brother is very hateful towards the crows. So I think it's, that's kind of where the conflict is coming from. The girl wants to help this child steal medicine. Her brother's trying to stop her. Um, trying to stop her from stealing like, it? Yeah, so I guess at one point, I feel like I'm thinking, <laughs> sorry, I have a, yeah, honestly, it is still kind of confusing in my head how it's going to progress. But in my head, the girl, she meets the kid, um, and then eventually she decides, okay, I'm going to help you, and then eventually I'm going to help steal it myself, because I know, like, you guys need it. And then her brother finds out, and then that's going to be the external conflict, where it's like, uh, like, you can't help them, they're the enemy, you know, this and that. And then she's like very compassionate. She's like, well, I want to help them because they're like, they're people too, kind of. Um, yeah, honestly, that that's kind of all I had for notes. For the yeah, you don't, I don't have to have all the answers. It's okay if you don't have all the answers right now. But I would say, as you continue to work through this, you're going to want to friend the pilot logline to tell us what we're doing in like the middle of the story, more or less. So if it's mm -hmm. like, if it's something like she, we, we will usually start with the inciting incident, right? When a Lakota girl or helps an enemy tribe member steal medicine for his tribe, she now must politically defeat all of her opponents in her tribe in order to stay in power. Is that what she's doing? Or she must now run? And now people are trying to kill her and she has to run away. And her goal is to get to a far settlement in order, or like, you know, a safe house somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like try to frame what we're doing in like the uh, around the middle of the, like the main meat of the story. 
Um, otherwise, we might get kind of confused as to what it is. Like, the whole episode could be about her trying to get a vial of medicine. Or that could just like a heist. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So it's her teaming up with a kid to steal steal this medicine. And then, but the, but so the social consequences are not the meat of the episode. That's like towards the end is when that comes in. Like she gets caught. Yeah, that would be. Lost. I was thinking that would be the climax. The climax would be her brother confronts her, takes the medicine, all is lost. And then the twist at the end, I guess, would be that um, it, it's like a mother that needs it. And then, you know. He feels some sympathy for like taking the medicine from this dying mother, you know, and then gives her the medicine. Like it's not an enemy he could relate to a dying mother, and then the kid is an actual kid, you know. Sure, sure, I, I understand. Yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah. So just just take what I told you here. Just try to try to hmm. show us exactly what we're doing in the episode. It's going to be like when inciting incident, an adjective protagonist must conflict before or else stakes so that's going to be before she gets caught or it might be something like she needs to do this before the disease ravages because maybe there's the risk that it'll ravage if it if it messes up their tribe it's going to mess up our tribe afterwards so maybe that's the ticking clock right maybe we need to cure the disease as soon as possible because maybe it's one, maybe it's a disease spread by the settlers which was a really common thing wasn't it yeah, 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 that makes sense. I was thinking like smallpox, but now I'm thinking I don't think they had the cure for it at that point. Not, so, not yeah. no, yeah. The, eventually, there was an inoculation <laughs> against it, but there was no like quick. There was not not a reliable, quick, easy cure, um, in the way that yeah. it sort of sounds like your plot device is working. In, in any case, I'm sure you'll figure out the exact details, but that would just be my feedback for now. Any questions on this? Okay, okay. So you don't think the stealing is enough to fill up this gap right i think that's maybe the problem where it feels like it's a very quick action whereas her running away is more of a, a I'm trying to think it really depends yeah. on the journey that you want to set the character mm -hmm. down is this going to be a journey of her ascending in her own tribe and becoming some kind of leader figure in it or is this going to be the story of her leaving her tribe and realizing these people are too warlike i have to go start my own thing somewhere it really just like there's a million stories you could tell in this setup so it, you have to find mm -hmm. what is the larger journey that we want to suggest the character is going on so i guess for me the girl's character is a little bit like ikiru the kurosawa film where like the have you seen it the... i haven't seen i've seen a lot of kurosawa movies but not that one. Oh, okay okay well basically she doesn't do too much in terms of like resolving the war and stuff but her small action of humanity slowly changes the mind of you know her brother and the other tribes people that are like oh screw the other tribes you know we hate them and this and that mm -hmm. her little action will hopefully be a step towards resolving it so that's what the that's the, a, a trajectory for the world but what about the character think of the character uh, yeah so is your character going to become someone that people go to advice for more is she going to become sort of a medicine woman or like a uh leader figure of some kind is she taking more responsibility in her tribe or is she becoming a diplomat is that the kind of story of the show she's going to become the liaison between other tribes and you're going to want to include the settlers or the because you mentioned what did you mention in your series logline the rivaling tribes young united states government and gold rush pioneers that means i expect to see all those things play a big part in the pilot so you oh, want okay. to probably put her on a trajectory that's going to involve her clashing and colliding with those factions whether and her becoming a sort of liaison might be a good way to do that um or it could be something like she's going to become a translator or is she going to become a traveling doctor or something you know what i mean maybe she needs to learn yeah, like put her in medicine. the middle of all of those okay maybe she that needs to sense. learn western medicine or something like that in order to more effectively help the tribes think of something that will make her have to interact with all the factions that you mentioned here Mm, okay, so maybe hint at her end goal, her her like final trajectory in that plot line, in the I mean that pilot log line, right? It, is, it, no, like, it doesn't have to be super specific. Like we're not looking for you to spell out the entire show just there. I guess I'm I'm just that recommending that to you as a way of figuring out what should happen in the pilot, um, because the answer mm -hmm. is whatever sets up the character journey the best. Even though we're not going to okay. not going to get a whole show, this would be like a multi hundred million dollar show. Obviously, probably not going to get the show. <laughs> Um, but you know and acknowledge that, and you understand. We want to suggest a strong, strong bones on a theoretical show. So we're creating, you know, a strong imaginary skeleton. Imaginary skeletons? What am I talking about? Um, I hope this makes sense and has helped you. But any questions left on that? 
No, yeah, yeah. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think I just didn't consider the overarching series in the pilot as much as I maybe should have. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It'll it'll just help you decide what needs to happen, and um, it will help you find the route that we need to go down. All right. Cool. Cool. I think this helped. Thanks right, for thanks, Tom. yeah. Thanks for sharing this with us. Manifest Destiny. It's a perfect title. I mean, if there hasn't been a show called this already, I'd be surprised and. It just there should be a show about this. It's a it's a great idea, really rich world, nice choices. Thanks, Kevin. All right, let's keep going. We have uh, looks like three more. Can I do them all in half an hour? We'll see. If I give maybe ten minutes each, I might stay just a few minutes over the time if we need to, just to make sure we get to them all. Um, but I can't stay way too long. Let's go right along to Pollock with medieval aliens. That sounds cool. Come on up if you're able. invited you to the stage, so you'll have to click the accept button. Okay, I'm going to go to the next person, but I'm going to leave the invite on, so as soon as you find it, just click it, and I'll be happy to work with you as soon as you can join us on the stage. Um, we're going to move to Dan for now. Go ahead, Dan. Yo! Hello. Hello. A new pilot, new idea. Excited to see what you've got for us this time. Why don't you read out what you've got here? Sure. Hero bot to zero bot genre, action sci-fi. Format 30 Minue. Comps, Spider-Man, Astro Boy, those superheroes sorts of things, and well, all about humanoid robots. Series logline. After a hero heroic robot accidentally breaks the law of robotics and kills a human. He is branded a monster and must still save the world from an evil scientist bent on world domination while coming to terms with his crimes. Pilot Lagra, a robotic hero tormented by the nightmares of his past, must save a city that loathes him from a villainous robot planning to unleash a mind-controlling serum. All right, thanks for that. Um, and is this a cartoon? For budgeting reasons, probably. Okay. Understood. Um, let me just read this one more time, make sure I understand. So, uh, half hour cartoon. So, this is, I get the world that we're in. Super, sort of like Saturday morning cartoon um, superhero stuff. Um, after a heroic robot accidentally breaks the law of robotics. Well, that's more than the law of robotics. That's the law of, the, that's just the normal law. You're not supposed to kill people, right? So, he breaks the law. But you're, I think I see what you're saying. He breaks one of, Asimov's laws of robotics and kills a human he is branded a monster and must still save the world okay so was he a superhero before yes okay so when you say a heroic robot you mean a superhero ro robot that's his that's yes. his not just a description of his personality that's his role okay, okay. so uh, I would just say something like that when a superhero robot and I think breaking the laws of robotics is not as relevant as just accidentally kills a human is just a much more to the point way of saying this. It's This is against every law. No one's supposed to kill a human, right? Can I ask who is the specific person or does it particularly matter? Um, I, at this point in the, of the brainstorming phase, not really sure. Not sure yet. That's okay. So it could just be a random accident or it could yeah, be something important. Yeah, it could just be a random bystander who got in the way while he was fighting a villain i could see people maybe branding him a monster because of that but it feels like for everyone to turn like it feels like if he was a successful and well-respected superhero before that then people would sort of understand a little bit like they know it was an accident and if he repents and he's like i'm sorry this won't happen again all these things unless like i guess maybe i'll ask this question was he respected before you said he was uh heroic but did people like him before this happened I guess the world kind of, well, at least people, humans kind of live in a little bit of fear of in this sort of semi-future -fu setting of robots because they just have so much potential to kill them. Oh, okay. Is it like the early days of super robotics? Yeah. It's like okay. one of those sorts of futures, like a Maybe. RoboCop type of setting where it's like the robots can do good, 
but they really have the pa- but they have the power to unleash dis- uh, unleash a blast of energy from their fingers. So people were already sus- suspicious of him. People were yeah, and they're made of like steel, so mm-hmm. and don't sleep, so they're pretty much like humans, us, but more efficient. Right. Okay. So I might just sort of explain just. And, and when I say explain, I don't mean add a ton of words, but just in a couple words, if you can say something sort of like, you know, in the early days of super robotics or in the er, in like an early prototype, a controversial early prototype of a robot superhero, something like that would sort of make me feel, OK, people were already a little bit not sure about him. And then he sort of failed to uh, win people over because he makes a big public mistake and it's what people were already worried about. So that. I would totally get if you were sort of... So, after a tenuously trusted, maybe? Yeah, uh, maybe controversial is a better word, but I sort of... Yeah, something like that. I think, I'm sure you'll find it. Um, But in any case, so he's not going from, I'm a nice robot everybody likes, to everyone hates me. It's more like, I'm not so sure about this robot, to, okay, he's proven that they're just as bad as we thought they were. And people are sort of more like, reluctantly accepting him as a hero, rather than celebrating him as one to, to begin with. I think that's what yeah, it's and it's more like he's coming to the terms with like, am I actually a monster? Right, and must still save the world from an evil scientist bent on, bent on world domination. Well, so coming to terms with his crime is an entirely internal process. Does he have to face some kind of consequence? Is he like on trial for this crime or something like that? It more manifests in him developing sorts of fears where he may become too paralyzed to act for fear that he would hurt somebody else oh then you might want to if that's the case you would probably phrase it a little bit more like when an accident on the job shatters his confidence a ro- like a superhero a controversial superhero robot must blank and blank and keep it external for the series logline so he must do these things in order to get his mojo back or what you know he needs to uh if his internal if his like sort of internal problems are at the heart of the episode we need to know what external things does he have to do to conquer those so if it's going to be something like he needs to beat this villain in order to feel like a hero again or something like that maybe that would sort of just be a nice way to phrase it but make sure to keep it as external as possible and coming to terms with something is just entirely up here um all right i was just thinking all right never mind i'll get back to that a robotic, a robotic hero tormented by the nightmares of his past must save a city that loads him from a villainous robot planning to unleash a mind control serum. Okay, so this feels a little less like a pilot logline because it you skipped over the inciting incident, which the inciting incident is at the front of your series logline here. It's the accident, right? So he doesn't start the show tormented, does he? He does. I'm thinking that he's... Throughout the episode, he'll have these flashbacks where you'll see wanted posters for him, mur- crime of murder. Oh, you're saying that happens before the show starts? Maybe. I don't know. I've seen shows do that before, where the first episode isn't exactly where everything began. It's possible, but I recommend you probably just have that happen in the episode. It's just going to be so much easier to narratively work I, I would not recommend you have the most important thing in the world especially something that changes the status quo happening before the status quo is established i think we need to understand this is what the world is like normally and then this happens to change it and we see that thing happen that's how i would really probably recommend thinking about this um in which case you, you're going to frame that pilot log, log line more like when inciting incident occurs it's a little bit more like what you have in the series log line so inciting incident an adjective protagonist must X conflict or else X stakes. Um, and I'm thinking that is releasing releasing the mind control serum, you put that in both the series and the pilot log lines. Is that sort of his plot the entire show that he's trying to find different ways to do? Or does he have like a different Mind scheme? control serum is not in the series log line. Is that not the world domination scheme? You're right, it's not exactly no, those terms. It's but... not, it's different. It's something, you know, it's going to be villain of the week sort of thing. Oh, is it they're villain of the week or is it scheme of the sort week? Sort of. They're all like. Ones. Yeah, that's like villain of the week and his henchmen. If it's a hen- henchman, villain of the week, henchman sort of thing. So, same villain every week. But... Yeah, it's kind of like. It's kind of like how in a show like a Power Rangers, it's the same villain, but they send different. Different, like. 
goons to do their work every day instead of actually being proactive. Okay, I understand. Um, but, uh, so, in, but, so, evil scientist bent on world domination while coming to terms with this crime. Oh, villainous ro- robot planning to unleash a mind control serum. Okay, so really, so you're saying every episode will have stakes like that? Will it sort of be like... Yes. We have to save the city in every episode, basically. Okay, I think I understand. Kind of like Powerpuff Girls kind of world is what I'm feeling from this one. Um, kind of like a Powerpuff Girls if the Powerpuff Girls accidentally hurt someone and everybody suddenly hated them every episode. <laughs> yeah, I think I see. All right. Um, yeah, I'm with you on the, on the, the basics of this. Just try to take that um, pilot log line and put the inciting incident really clearly up front and let us understand that as a result of this, this happens, and now your character must blank external thing, try to uh, imply the internal struggle, like coming to terms with the crime is something that your character is doing in his mind, but we don't really have the words for that available in these log lines. We just need to focus on the external. So tell us what is his goal, and we're going to need to know that by accomplishing that, he will also solve his internal problem. All right. Questions? Um, hmm. Thinking here. I'm just thinking of how to reword this all. Okay, well, we have um, just a short time left, so I might need to move on just to get to our remaining That's ones. That's ho- Hope that helps. Um, looking forward to seeing more. It does. More. I'll let the per- next person go. Sure. Thank you, Dan. Looking forward to seeing more on this next week. All right, let me try again with Pollock. I'm going to click Invite to Speak. There it is. Now you'll just need to unmute your mic. By clicking the gray microphone icon in the bottom left. Maybe you're on push to talk mode. Okay, finally, I got it in. All right, ready to talk about medieval aliens? Yes, I'm ready to talk about medieval aliens. All right, go ahead and read it out for us. All right. Series long line. A medieval society on the corpse of war must deal with an unprecedented alien invasion. Pilot long line. A jaded princess and two competitive brothers vying for her hand after the world turned upside down when aliens mirroring their society invade Earth several centuries earlier than normal. All right, thank you for that. Earlier than normal? What does that mean? Um, usually the aliens um, invade in present day. Usually in what? In other stories? In other stories, yeah, they usually invade in present day or like in roughly the modern times. Right, but we don't need to mention other stories in the logline, so when they... They invade Earth is all we need to say. We don't need to say earlier than we think that they would, given the full context of other stories in the world. So just, I would end it there. Um, let me just, okay. Let me look at the basics. So War of the Worlds, Game of Thrones, great comps. The It's a very high concept premise that seems very clear. A medieval society on the cusp of war must deal with an... Well, I don't really know if there's a precedented alien invasion, so I would just say must deal with an alien invasion. Um, all right. And I think we're saying must sort of defeat the aliens. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Technically, yeah. Pilot, a jaded princess, great, and two competitive brothers vying for her hand. I really like that. A great setup of the characters. Have the world turned upside down when aliens mirroring their society invade Earth. Okay, that's the inciting incident. But what do the characters have to do in the pilot? Oh. Um, with pilot, they, I think they have to survive. Survive what? This, survive the alien invasion because they're the, because they are they are the first kingdom to be invaded. Okay, but so for the uh, we need to get as specific as something like when aliens crash a ship into her castle. You know, our main character now needs to go and get a magic gem in order to get rid of them or something like that's pretty broad and a terrible example you're hearing a lot of kind of weird mic sounds coming from your mic i'm just going to server mute it for one second just so i can talk oh no i sir whoops i served myself. Uh, hang on one sec so i'm just muting your mic for one second i'll unmute it in just a moment so you can talk but i was just hearing a lot of like sound through the speaker okay so 
what I'm going to say is um, we need to get really specific with your character goal. And for instance, you're saying that they need to survive, but what is the actual benchmark or milestone for that? For instance, if your characters are like, they, it might be something like a jaded princess and, her, and these two competitive brothers get trapped in a tower, and now they need to survive until dawn against wave after wave of alien invaders so they can get home and warn the king about the oncoming onslaught. Something like that, you see how I've just picked a smaller objective that we feel like, okay, within this episode, this one objective will be taken. So in our first pilot, we're not going to say something like, we need to win the war. We're going to say something like, we need to destroy that tank that is on that hill that is facing our supply lines. And that's going to be like the first chapter of many chapters that are going to sort of comprise the plot line that you described in your series logline. So you're going to want to get really specific and concrete with that pilot logline in terms of character goals and what specifically they need to accomplish. I'm going to unmute you now. Go ahead. I do like the um, tower idea. That they're in a tower, the aliens come, they have to fight through the aliens, they have to get to the kingdom to warn them about the aliens. Sure. And that's... Something an- like that. Go ahead. Yeah. And that's enough of a, of a, of a pilot that... The, maybe the kingdom hasn't been attacked yet. Maybe this was the initial scouting party, and they were fighting off the scouting party of the aliens. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. So the pilot might be something like, we need to defend this castle from aliens um, in order to save our kingdom. Something like, or, you know, get back in time to, tell, to help them prepare because the hordes are about to descend and it's going to be all over unless we can do that. So you might want to just find yeah. that goal. It, you don't have to use exactly that, but do some more thinking and just try to try to find that really specific and concrete finish line for the characters in the pilot that we understand. By the end of one episode, they will have accomplished this. Okay. That's actually good. Great. That's good. Yeah. Questions on this? Yeah. Um, you like the... Uh, hold up. You like the jaded princess and those and the clumps and the and the vine for a hand bit, right? Yeah, that's a great dynamic. That's good. No, no, I don't have any other questions. I just but yeah. Okay. Well, looking forward to seeing more. I think this is a really cool high concept idea. All right. Thanks, Pollock. We've got one more, and we have time for one more from TJ with hot chip come on tj hello hi why don't you read out what you've got for us here it's a weird one but okay let me just so hot chip it's a whole county i want to make half hour it could buy like in the pockets of the rocky dead please like the wind idea of cocaine bear so basically, it's about a socially awkward gay teenager seven hunches starts in a pocket when it back becomes a press possessed, causing the world to fight for their lives. So I want the pilot to be a socially awkward gay teenager gay life situation by a battery game possessed. All right, thanks for this. Um, quick question, what, what are hot chips? You mean like spicy potato chips? I'm talking about like the Ritos, like, like Cheetos. Oh, Cheetos. Okay, so like spice, spicy snacks. Got it. Yeah. Okay. When a socially awkward gay teenager who's obsessed with hot chips starts an apocalypse, when his back. So we have two different when constructions in your pi- pilot or in your logline. Try to just pick, just stick with one of these or the other. So you could just start with something like a socially awkward gay teenager who's obsessed with hot chips starts an apocalypse when his bag becomes possessed. So you're saying the chips become possessed in a way? Yeah. Okay, causing the world to fight for their lives. What are the, What is the world fighting against? Uh, trying to fight the Bible. Against what? What is killing them? The chips. The chips. And so are you saying it's sort of like this t- this brand of chips has sort of become- turned evil all over the world? Oh, no. no. I think 
Hush it, maybe? Like, I think maybe, like, let's say, I'm hopefully, let's just say that the shit that this specific, I think I do like that it's just one brand. If it's one brand, I could sort of see, if it was a popular brand all over the world, maybe if it all turned evil at once, then I could see the world having to fight for survival. But if it's just one single bag of evil ships, I'm struggling to see how that would threaten the world. Does that make sense? Yeah, honestly... It would probably be, like, a popular brand. Okay, yeah, maybe it's, like, an evil... The evil Lays Corporation or something like that. Maybe all their products have been corrupted or have been, you know... Maybe they're possessed by the devil or something. I, I think I see what you're saying. Um, okay, so pilot logline. A socially awkward gay teenager gets in a life-or-death situation after his bag of chips get possessed. This is kind of vague, and it's sort of just you describing what you said in the series logline already. I, so forgot, I don't know. I did not know how to format it in a proper way. That's okay. That's why we're here. We're, we're here to, to learn. So I, I would suggest try to find that really clear, concrete objective that your main character needs to accomplish in the first episode. Like we were just talking with the last student about uh, an alien invasion story, right? But in the pilot, we said, okay, you have to defend this tower against the aliens in order to survive and make it back home. So you'll need to find some objective like that just in your pilot. Maybe it's something like, you know, when the when the chips start talking to our main character, people start to think he's crazy. And now he needs to prove that they're actually evil before, you know, as they kill people around him or something like that. Try to find just a, a really uh, clear, concrete objective in just the pilot episode and then frame the pilot logline around that. That'd be fun, <laughs> Andy. All right, does that make sense? Any questions on this? Not really. I think this is going to be hard to develop, but... It's a crazy idea, and I mean, that's what boot camp classes are great for. Just try something crazy. Just just see if it works. Just um, have fun with it, and that's a great way to just learn and, and just get through the scripts that you need to get through to build the skills and uh, become a great TV writer. So thank you so much for sharing. Hope that was helpful. Gotcha. All right, we are at the end of our class for today. I will open the floor in these last few minutes to just any questions about anything we talked about today. I guess we don't have way too much time to get into time slot and format and things like this. We do have way more slides in this presentation than we probably are able to get to. We will say the assignment for next time is to revise that series and pilot logline based on the feedback that you got today. Also, the other really important, non-skippable, absolutely mandatory part of this is to read a professional pilot. Excuse me. Good God. <clears throat> to read a professional pilot script. Ideally, something in the same genre or kind of world as your pilot. It doesn't really have to be. It just has to be a professional script that is well-written and that you... I mean, you don't have to love it. You don't have to like it even, but you have to read it cover to cover and be ready just to say, what did you read? What did you notice? What did you like? What did you learn? Basic questions like that. It's not a quiz. There's not right answers, but you have to read pilot scripts to be in this course and to know what a pilot looks and feels like. There's no way you can skip this step. You have to be reading to be in these bootcamp classes. So we have um, a great link, which includes many, many hundreds of pilot script options um, to read. Not sure, maybe he could leave that in the uh, chat or maybe he's right about to post it in the chat. Um, and there's tons of options. They're sorted by comedy, drama, UK, US. You can um, pick whatever you want. You just need to be reading at least one script a week and just come to class ready to say, what did I read? What did I notice? What did I like? What did I learn? Basic stuff like that. Um, so we'll share that in the uh, chat. There it is. So TV writing, it's a Google group. You can see it in the chat there. So just click on that and you will have plenty of things to choose from to read. You should make a queue of scripts to read. Some maybe from shows you've seen, some from shows that never got made or that you haven't seen. We need to get a sense of what they all kind of look and feel like um, in order to know what we're trying to make on the page. All right, so read a script every week and work on your pilot and series log lines and just start filling out your sketchbook. Anything that you think of, there are no ideas that should not be included. It's like a collage of all your inspirations. Maybe you have some idea for a sequence in the middle, just write it down. Maybe you have some ideas for some characters, you have no idea how they'll fit in yet. Write it down anyway, just collect and aggregate, sand for the sandbox so that in the following weeks we can start to shape it into Little sandcastles. Okay, um, so we are at the end of our time. I'm going to open the floor to questions on anything we talked about today or on the boot camp program coming up. What would you guys like to know? Feel free to either raise your hand or use the text.
And if you don't have any questions, you can, of course, head out, and we'll see you next time. Start your sketchbook, fill it out, read your pilot script, and we'll see you back here next week. Uh, this looks like we have a few folks typing, so I'll, I'll stay and take any remaining questions that we have. Kevin G says, is the goal for the class to create just a pilot or a whole season plot point slash direction? Just the pilot. We're not ever, ever, ever doing anything beyond the pilot in trying to break into TV writing. Um, there's no point in continuing past the pilot because when a show is bought, it will be developed extensively from there. Um, and you're going to have to throw away all that work that you did. So just the pilot. Judea says, I can't really fit what I want into my logline. Um, well, I'm glad to take a look at what you have, if that would be helpful, or glad to answer any questions you have to get you unstuck. Or we have lab tomorrow, if you want to come by from 4 to 6 tomorrow. We have lab for anyone wondering. This is for subscribers. You can come by with up to five pages of anything you're working on and any questions and topics you want to hear more about. That's two hour hours every Saturday. But also, just if there are questions I can answer, glad to do so. There's the lab uh, entry in the chat. You can click interested if you are planning on showing up to an event or thinking about it, and it'll give you a reminder before the class starts. Judea says, I'll show what I have, but it's kind of garbage. OK, well, I mean, I, I can still comment on it if you want, or we can wait till lab tomorrow if you want a little more time with it. All right, red string. So yeah, we are at the end of our time um, at this point, so I may not be able to do full. I can just give it a quick read and give you quick feedback on it right now if you want. And then tomorrow during lab, I'm glad to do as much work as you want on this. Um, so red string, action fantasy, half hour pilot. Sailor Moon is one of the comps. After a small town gets invaded by emotionless angels, an empathetic girl must form a contract with a surly demon to save others from getting their emotions stolen turning them into monsters, or you prevent them from being turned into monsters, before she herself becomes the angel's magnum opus. Hmm. Yeah, it does feel like a... If the town's already been invaded, I'm wondering how the main character's goal is something that she's even able to do. Aren't they not already among us? Have they not already accomplished their evil plan of stealing everyone's emotions? Also, the question might be, what happens when they steal everyone's emotions? They the people die or something like that but what exactly are the stakes um if they steal them are they gone forever um you know what is the alien's actual plan besides stealing the emotions things like this sailor moon meets lucifer not just suggests so there's some interesting elements here you don't have to answer these questions now tomorrow during lab we can get much more into it but those were just the things that jumped to my mind can you come up to talk we're at the end of the class time now but tomorrow i'm glad to do as much as you want on it All right, any other questions before we wrap up today? Looks like we have one person still typing. Or anyone can, of course, ask their question. Oh, that was just a comment. Reminds me of Devil Man Crybaby. Is that a show? Um, all right, so if there's no more questions, we will have to wrap up for today. We are past our time. So a reminder for next week, revise series and pilot logline, and read a pilot cover to cover. Pay attention. Maybe take notes if you want. Write down things that you notice, like, or learn. And we'll look forward to seeing you more uh, for next week, which is week one. Week one is also free, but after week one, you need to subscribe. So check out scriptcamp.net slash membership. Sign up for your free trial, two weeks of every class that we offer, and every boot camp, every lab. Um, and uh, try it all out. Thanks, guys. Um, we'll be glad to see you more next week and at your next Script Camp class or event. Have a great night, folks.